Hello and welcome to Simplified on Power Drift. We are doing a series on suspension. We've already done three episodes and this is the last one. The first one talked about what suspension does. Second one, compression. Third one, rebound. If you haven't seen these, please do go see it. And today we'll discuss preload. Probably the most commonly available adjustment in your suspension on Indian motorcycles and probably also the least understood and the least used both. Before we start, as usual, there are four things down there that you should be doing. Please do do that for us and let's begin. What you see of preload adjustment on your motorcycle normally, at the back especially, is just a wavy collar with a little bit of what looks like a capsule and you can use a wrench or a screwdriver and a hammer or some method to move this little capsule between the notches and you can change your preload. But most people think the preload makes the motorcycle stiffer or softer and honestly it can feel like that but that's not actually the case. The actual way to make a motorcycle feel harder or softer in actual terms is to change the rate of the spring which means you have to buy an entirely new spring, rebuild your suspension unit and then install it on your motorcycle. That's when you actually have a harder motorcycle or a stiffer motorcycle in terms of suspension. The thing about suspension units is that not all parts of a suspension unit work at the best possible place. Okay, what I mean by that is if you take a rear shock unit and let's say that it has 100 mm of travel available which means it's fully extended now and then you can have it fully compressed 100 mm later, right? What you'll discover is that the bottom, let's say 20 mm, they work but they're not very, very controlled or sophisticated. The top 20, 25 mm also will not be very sophisticated, will not be very controlled. And in the middle, something like say 50 mm of this and these are just numbers out of my head, doesn't actually break down into 25, 25 and 50 is never that neat. But in the middle is those 50 mm which is where the suspension does its best work. And the preload adjuster is there so that you can adjust the motorcycle based on your weight and riding style so that the suspension works in that 50 mm of space as much of the time as possible. Now obviously, if you land a jump and there's a big load on the suspension, you may not be in that 50 mm anymore. But think about it like this. You'll go over many small bumps and you might only jump the bike once a month. So that's okay. It's those little bumps that we are absorbing constantly that we want to have the best part of the suspension working for us on. So in essence, what preload does is it sets the ride height of the motorcycle, which is how much of the suspension do you consume when you sit down so that the next available part of the suspension that will do the work for you is part of the best part of the suspension unit. Right? So if you assume that, let's say a manufacturer designs a motorcycle for somebody who says 65 kilos and let's say you're only 42 kilos, then you want to set the preload less than stock, which means that the spring will remain extended quite a bit even when you sit down on it and below that immediately is the best part of the spring. And on the converse, let's say 65 kilos is your base setting and you're actually 112 kilos. When you sit down, you consume a lot of the suspension travel anyway with your weight, which means you might be at the bottom end of the 50 mm, which means you have only the worst part of the suspension left to do the work for you, so the motorcycle won't feel great. And that's why when you put a pillion on your motorcycle, it suddenly becomes much harder to ride. It's not the fact that the motorcycle sat down at the back, that is a factor. The other part of the factor is the best part of the suspension travel you've already consumed just by sitting down on top of it. So, if you were to take a pillion on or put an extremely large amount of luggage on your motorcycle, it's good for you to take the preload adjuster and just move it up all the way and make it as hard as possible. It may not be the most optimal setting. The optimal setting might be one click less or two clicks less, but it's certainly better than whatever stock was because as soon as you put load on the back of the motorcycle, it sits like this, which means it will steer slower. It means your front brakes will be less effective. It means your rear brake will feel more effective, but if you're a good rider, you won't be using your rear brake a lot. And in a sense, your motorcycle will feel like the front end is up and the back end is low. And the reason is you've just compressed the rear suspension and preload essentially allows you to set the attitude back up again. Okay, if you have access to an electronically adjustable motorcycle, it's an amazing thing to watch preload at work because you can sit down on the motorcycle, set preload and see the motorcycle changing attitude like this. And it immediately tells you that the attitude at which it was set, which is where the steering geometry etc. work best, are part of the preload process and if you don't do it, you won't enjoy the best form of it. So, how do you find the best preload setting? Well, again, because most preload adjusters only have five or seven steps, one easy way to do it is to just mess with it, which is take the C-wrench that is probably in your toolkit or do what the mechanics do, which is usually take a large screwdriver, put it carefully on the collar uh, and then take a hammer and basically hammer it until the preload collar moves one notch at a time. So I would say whatever your stock suspension is, if you're a heavy rider, uh, go up two notches, so make it two notches harder. If you're a light rider, make it two notches lighter and see whether you feel better about the motorcycle or not. 
Remember, it will make the motorcycle feel harder or softer, but that's just a feeling. What it's actually doing is controlling what part of the spring is being used when you go over a bump or go over a cruff. The scientific method of doing this is something called setting sag. I'm not going to go into setting sag in detail because I think there's about 8 million excellent videos on the internet. There are multiple methods doing it. But in all cases, setting sag comes down to something very simple, which is first, you unload the suspension completely so you can get the total free length of the suspension. You would do this on a center stand just by parking it and you'd get the rear free length. On a side stand, you'd lift the front off and you'd get more or less an approximate but close to accurate version of the front free length. To get the actual front free length, obviously you'll have to lift the motorcycle completely off the ground by the front. That'll take a ratchet tie down strap and a strong roof and all of that, so I'm not going to go into that. But once you have the free length of the suspension, you'll want to sit down on the motorcycle. And remember, you have to do this in full gear, wearing everything that you normally do. If you're setting up for touring, then you'll want to do this with the luggage mounted on the motorcycle as well. As soon as you do this, the suspension units will compress. And now you want to measure the length of the suspension again. And what you're doing when you're setting sag in effect is change the preload setting until the difference between the two measurements is something good. And on the internet, you'll find a reference for what's considered an average good number for this. Right? There are other people who measure sag in other ways and set sag in other ways, but in all cases, it's essentially the difference in these two measurements that is in play. And you want to set it so that the motorcycle sits at the best part of the suspension with your weight on it. And yes, that does imply that let's say if you have say a Duke 390 and you set the preload for yourself as you ride in the city and then you're going for a weekend tour or 10 days out and you're going to put 20 kilos of luggage on the back seat, you're going to want to change the preload again. And again, preload adjustment, once you know how to move the preload ring around, is very simple and you can do it on the side of the road. It takes five minutes to do if you have the right tools. Again, if a mechanic is experienced, he will know how to set sag and they will do this job really fast for you. But if you're not going to go to all of that trouble, take a spanner, mess with the preload ring and see where it leads you. And in all cases, there is no right, there is no wrong. What feels best for you is the best setting possible. And for most people, Setting sag will help them find the best setting faster without the trial and error and that's all there is to it. So, suspension, spring and a damper when the wheel moves up. Compression damping is at work when it moves back out of the suspension. Rebound damping is at work. Preload controls the ride height of the motorcycle. And one of the side effects of preload is if you have a particularly low slung motorcycle, raising the preload can sometimes just make the motorcycle sit higher on its suspension and give you a little bit extra ground clearance. I have a Tono, extremely low ground clearance. I tend to run a race setting, which is an actual suspension length adjustment. So there's a nut you can turn and the actual rear spring grows in size. But for most motorcycles that don't have that kind of high end suspension, if you just raise the preload, your motorcycle will sit higher. But in all cases, setting up suspension well dramatically changes your feeling for the motorcycle. And my favorite example for this is my KTM Duke 390. It used to have stock suspension for the longest time. I found a massive jump just by changing that rear shock to an old used Yamaha shock, which honestly wasn't even serviced at that point. Just the arrival of a more sophisticated suspension unit dramatically changed that KTM Duke 390. Today, not only have I changed the spring rate on that spring to my weight, I've also set up the front with a preload adjustable unit. We've set sag at both ends of the KTM. And honestly, it's one of the smoothest, most pliant, and at the same time, one of the frighteningly great KTMs that I've ever ridden, because it is able to handle good roads and bad roads with such great ease that it makes the rest of the frame, the engine, the gearing and all of that just come together into a smashing motorcycle. And that's why I'd like to leave you with this thought. If you have a motorcycle with adjustable suspension, do make notes about how you're adjusting it, but do spend the time to adjust and set up your motorcycle. It will dramatically change how you feel about your motorcycle. If you have a motorcycle that does not have adjustable suspension, that's fine. Make the most of whatever you've got. So if you've got a RTR 200 with front preload and rear preload, please do adjust those things. If you've got something with compression or rebound or both, spend time and mess with the settings if you have to. Note all the changes you make so that you can go back to the good setting until you find the better setting. And finally, if you've decided that you're going to keep your motorcycle around for a while, stop wasting money on exhausts and issues and all of this BS. What you really should be trying to upgrade first is your suspension. Because once you get your suspension right, 80% of the hard work is already done. Then you can think about extracting more performance for your motorcycle, especially once you've brought your skills up. Thank you so much for watching. This was a four-part series on suspension that we've always wanted to do on Simplified. Thank you for encouraging us to do it. If you'd like to discuss any part of the four-part series in the comments, we are ready for it. Whether you'd like to discuss suspension units, compression, rebound, preload, a combination of these things, settings, 
we are here for you. And if there's other topics you would like to see on Simplified, do the exact same thing. Just leave us a comment and we'll get right on it. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you've subscribed. Hit the bell notification icon so that these videos come to you automatically. Please do like the video if you loved it. I know that just sounds odd. And please do show this video to your friends. And the whole series of Simplified is available as a playlist on our channel. That's youtube.com slash powerlift. Please do go see it if you're seeing Simplified for the first time. We've covered a whole bunch of topics that take all these kind of complicated ideas, whether it's myth busting, whether it's just details of how it works or why you should be paying attention or why you shouldn't be paying attention to certain things. All of that is Simplified. More episodes are coming. Stay tuned and thank you so much for watching.